You're listening to the Effective Statistician Podcast, a weekly podcast with Alexander Schacht and Benjamin Pieske, designed to help you reach your potential, lead great science, and serve patients without becoming overwhelmed by work. This is episode number five of the Calc series. You're hired. How to fail to be rejected during the interview process. So this is the last episode of this first season that I'm doing together with the PSI Calc team. It's a lot of fun. And hopefully you enjoyed all the other episodes already. If you haven't listened to them, just go back in your podcast uh, player or on the streaming that you're looking to it in Spotify or whatever, wherever you are listening to this and search for the other really, really informative and nice episodes that we already did. In this episode, you will get lots of actionable advice in terms of what to do about your CV, what to expect from the interview, and also some really practical tips in terms of what to do and what not to do. And you will get that both from uh, people that have gone through these interviews, from both sides actually, sitting on both sides of the desk, being interviewed as well as Uh, interviewing people. So look out for this really, really nice episode. And if you want to find more information, just go to theeffectivestatistician.com slash student, where you will find information about this episode, as well as on all the other episodes that we have for this park season. Next week, of course, we will have another regular episode and stay tuned for this. So now we are in episode 5 of this series that we're doing together with the PSI Calc team. And today I have two uh, members here from the Calc team. Uh, first, Rianne, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, thank you. Very good. And we have Rachel as well. Hi. <laughs> Very good. So. Um, As a start, maybe you can first kind of introduce yourself a little bit, your role, and especially kind of what your experience as an interviewer is, or actually as an interviewee. So, because I think that's a really nice thing today, we will talk about it from both sides, kind of uh, what people that sit uh, on the that come as a job applicant, but also those that actually have the jobs and what they are looking for. So um, maybe we start with Rianne, with you. Okay, so um, I've been in industry about six and a half years now. Um, I've had two jobs during that time and I have done a placement year as well. So I've had about three ex interview experiences myself. One um, yeah, for the placement year, one for the graduate role, and then one um, for two years into my um, industry experience, um, switching jobs. Um, in terms of how sort of giving interviews, um, where I work now at a pharmaceutical company, I was involved in for about three years in the placement interview scheme. Um, so I have a, a good idea there. Then I got involved in the graduate interviews and uh, in the last year, um, the more experienced I'd say there was applying for a graduate role up to about having 15 years experience. Okay, um, okay, very good. Yeah. Okay, and Rachel? Hi, um, yeah, not too dissimilar to Rianne. Um, I've been in the industry a little less, so coming up to four and a half years. Um, And that's been a mixture of CRO and pharmaceutical company. Um, so I've had a, a number of interviews myself, um, ranging from a few graduate applications and then a, a more senior role more recently. Um, in terms of experience as an interviewer, that was mostly at a CRO um, in, in the graduate application process. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, actually, I started in the industry in 2002, so quite some time ago. <laughs> I'm a little bit... <laughs> so, you so, have a lot to add to this. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I went to a couple of uh, interviews at that time, and then I switched uh, companies again two years later. Um, that was actually a funny process. I um, was called whether I'm in interested in a new job and then I had that interview and I thought I can't just have one interview with a company and then go for it. I need to have a little bit of a uh, selection so <laughs> then I send out quickly some other uh, CVs and get some other interviews just to, <laughs> just to get a little bit of a choice. So um, that, was a, that was a nice story. And then throughout, then I was actually 15 years at that uh, company. But, you know, in 15 years you can have ups and downs and sometimes I was looking for other jobs during that career. And that was always really good to kind of validate yourself a little bit, to test your market and also to not get, let's say, out of this habit of, of applying. So I think that's um, an important skill set also that you, let's say, know how the process works, you get, you know, have a little bit of a self-validation throughout your career. So, it's always good to do that. Sometimes it really helps with your self-worth as well. So. <laughs> okay, and yeah, through the outsource career I have uh, done lots of job interviews uh, from the uh, company perspective uh, for all kind of different roles. Okay, so... Um, Rian, Rachel, if you get first a CV and a first time an uh, application, what's your first thing that you're looking into? Rachel, maybe you can go first. Well, um, Rianne and I were having a chat earlier actually about um, a CV that we got through at our CRO that um, jumped out at me in that they were um, a keen baker and we knew straight away that we knew they were a good person for the office. <laughs> um, so I think when you look at a CV, it's um, I guess you want to see the person that they they are um, underneath all of the you the know, personality. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and kind of showing who you are as a person rather than academic um, results. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah. What was your, what's your, I, the first thing you are looking for? I was going to say, um, for me, it's not just the CV, but also the cover letter. Um, I mm -hmm. would say the cover letter is as important as the CV. Um, not all applications come with a cover letter, and it's hard to get that personal side through without it. Sometimes you do find the CV is quite academic, um, experience based and yeah. I think it's another opportunity to show yourself and sell yourself with a cover letter. Yeah. Um, so I have found in, in my experience those that come with a cover letter are the stronger candidates and more likely to get selected. Um, in the cover letter what specifically do you look for? So the first thing that stands out to me is I can tell when it's a generic cover letter, when the person maybe has done their final year, they want a job, they're not quite sure even which industry. So it's very generic and it could be sent to me, um, you know, in the pharmaceutical, medical um, sector, it could be sent to a banking group, it's not much there to demonstrate to me they specifically want this role. Um, so I would say make it tailor it to the organisation, um, so be specific to the company, um, do your research about the company, get that out, why you want to work for that specific company and, and the industry. Um, so that is the one thing I would say stands out instantly, um, something that's specific versus generic. Um, I think the, for me the passion needs to come through that. Yes. Through that. So, so are you really passionate about um, working in the healthcare sector? Are you passionate about um, improving lives for patients? 
So is that something that is important to you? Or is it just a kind of generic job? Yeah, just, yeah. you know, getting some money to make a living. That's, I think, is an important thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's something that you want to spend a lot of your time in it. So you need to be sure that this is really your passion you want to pursue. And if it's your passion, just write about it. Okay. I think that's important. And I'm glad you raised that point on passion. I have to say, um, the most memorable ones, um, you know, we do get a lot of CVs and we do bring in quite a few candidates. And I do remember even going in, into this, uh, the interview, oh yes, this is a person, I remember their CV. They were very, very passionate. Um, even things like listening to his podcast, for example, demonstrates they've gone to the effort um, to find out more. Um, anything, you know, any research, bring that out. Um, those are the ones that have stood out to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, any other things that you look into the CV? Yeah. Yeah, so a few points, I think, on the CV. Remember, we do get a lot of CVs in. We don't necessarily have a huge amount of time um, to go through them all, so it's got to be quite punchy. Um, I don't want to see an essay. I'd yeah. say two pages, absolute maximum. We have had brought in plenty of people. That's just a one-page CV, because everything on there is what I want to see. So yeah. don't think that more words you put in there is going to be more effective. That's, that's not true. So I would say um, make sure it's well written, well structured. Um, there have definitely been times I've picked one up and it is like an essay and I don't know where to start. It's an immediate negative point. Yeah, um, you don't need yeah. it. <laughs> no, it needs to be tabular form, yeah, it for needs sure. To be yeah. Little, yeah, tabular, concise. Um, so I'd say typically the structure, you know, usually you start with your name, your address, um, perhaps a photo like you've mentioned. Um, usually it's a, uh, a short, a very short personal sort of profile statement, so I'd say one to three lines max. Again, make it punchy. Um, you would have a section on your education, you know. Um, here there are differences. I think when I applied, I even went back to my GCSEs, mm -hmm. which now I think was a bit of an overkill. Um, I don't tend to see that, and maybe that space would have been better set for work experience or something. Yeah, um, yeah absolute any work experience is great. Yeah. Any, uh, Especially as a graduate, any work experience is good. Yeah. So I think the education section, you know, you could fill that up quite a lot, but. I don't know how necessary it is. Yeah. Um, maybe most A-level, you don't need to go back to your, your GCSE or equivalent where you're from. I might even just limit it to the degree. Or just the degree. Yeah. I and think that would be fine. Some of the work yeah. experience. So. Yeah. But also kind of any extracurricular uh, things would be good. So um, if you, for example, ran a student association or something like this or um, yeah let some um, other kind of voluntary work and uh, that was you know you had a impactful role there that's always something good good to add if it's in your cv be prepared to talk about it yeah so, so as a as an interviewer i usually um before the interview i grab the cv and i know that's what most people do and have a quick review, and then just mark a couple of things that you want to talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so the, your CV is basically the trigger for your interviewer. Yeah. So be prepared to speak about specifically each point you put in. And that, I think, is al already a good filter to what you want to put in. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so if there's something that you don't want to discuss in the interview process, well, that's probably not relevant. Mm. Yeah. So let's, let's move on. Now you have sent your CV, you got a call from the uh, company or an email that you're, um, uh, they want to further talk with you. What's in your experience the next step then for the, in, in, in how does the interview process goes from there, 
Rachel, what, what's usually what happens in, in, in your company then? Um, so thinking back to when I applied for a graduate job, I received a telephone call from um, the careers department and they invited me to a graduate assessment day um, okay. at the, the CRO um, headquarters and that consisted of a whole day of, of different events um, so it was for a, a graduate statistician role and there was a number of other applicants there I think about 12 potentially um, and throughout the day they they rotated us through um, individual interviews um, a couple of uh, tests um, what kind of tests were um, these? I'm trying to think now so there was, was these kind of psychological tests? no or? they were more so one of them was focused on detail so I think there was a communication email focused test so you would get, have a scenario and you would reply to someone regarding that scenario and um, the other test was more kind of logic and programming mm -hmm. based um, it was all they were both written so there was no programming um, itself but it was kind of to flow through the logic that you would expect to see in, in a in a program and um, mm -hmm. SAS, so uh, they didn't expect any kind of prior programming language experience. Um, was just, it? Um, I had a similar one. Was it more? It's like if else scenarios. So it's like yeah. if, if this is the code, um, what would be the correct answer? Like what would it select? So yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then. I also had to do an um, within the interview. There was a presentation that I had to do, um, which was prepared for in advance. Um, so I think it was thinking back about 10, 15 minutes presenting a, a statistical topic of choice, and then the interviewers would then question me about that topic. Mm -hmm. And I think that was it. Oh no, there was also a group activity as well. So the day was very, very busy and very tiring. Um, but you could see throughout the day they were trying to test different elements of the job, um, your communication, you know, your your technical ability um, and team building, yeah. Yeah, yeah. okay. Uh, so you didn't have any pre-screening uh, uh, interview? I That's didn't, you? no. Okay. Um, it was CV based, um, but there was no telephone interview. Um, but I do know that other companies. Yeah, we all have yeah. always done that. So, so the first filter after the CV is a short screening interview, where you would uh, talk with one person over the phone or over Skype, and um, yeah, one hour interview basically. So, who would that normally be with? Uh, would it be. Like no, HR? no, that wouldn't be HR. That would be actually probably a hiring manager. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would do the screening interview. And for you, Rian? Um, so maybe I'll start off with experience when I was applying. Um, so this was what 2012, and I know things have changed already since then. Um, I think actually it was a lot, a little bit easier when I applied. So we. Uh, at both companies, um, one was a CRO and uh, later the pharmaceutical company, both were pretty similar in that I had a competency HR interview to start, um, which is you know, give examples of when you worked in a team, give examples when you worked under pressure, um, to type timelines. Um, Just strengths and limitations. <laughs> yeah. I think they did ask. Um, yeah, what are your strengths and limitations? Or give three words to describe yourself, something yeah. like that. Um, asking why you're applying for the role, what interests you about the role. Um, even open-ended, um, tell me about yourself. Yeah. So, um, um, and then that followed by a sort of technical, sort of statistical interview. Um, mm. 
I would say both again quite similar in the questions, even though you know, I was two years um, more experienced the second time. They were still fairly okay questions, um, standard. Standard interview questions yeah. that you would get yeah. generic from any HR person around the world. It yeah, wasn't HR, it, it was a statistician. Oh, okay. okay. Giving both those interviews. Um, actually, so in the CRO, um, I was applying as a graduate, we did have a test as well. So in my case, it was, they showed me, it was a piece of paper with, um, it was like basically an Excel printout. Um, it had rows of data, I can't even remember what it was, blood pressure for patients, something like that, with column for age or um, gender. And it, it just said, how would you analyze this data? Um, I had a treatment group as well. Um, and are there any problems here? So picking out things like some age um, was missing sometimes, or some of the blood pressure results was missing. So just picking things out, like, okay, missing data might be a problem here. There was some abnormal results in there, like an age of, I don't know, 102. <laughs> pick out a data error problem. Something fairly simple that's just testing you know, your, um, your attention to detail, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was me as, as a candidate. And now the other side, giving an interview. Um, I, I mentioned, I think the process has changed now. It's gone a little lengthier. Um, in that now, um, you'd still have your HR interview, you'd still have your statistical interview. Um, now also, you'd expect to have a presentation on a statistical topic. So I think that's a new one. Yeah. Um, the test isn't always done. Um, I would say those uh, the times they've been done is when we've run an assessment center where we're, we are doing a recruitment style event. Um, we're bringing in a lot of candidates and we can accept one or two. Um, then we would run a group activity and a logic test. Um, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, I, I've seen these level of detail tests quite a lot. Um, I know that um, colleagues gave out kind of uh, tables and with, with arrows on it and then they asked the um, applicants to um, review the table and find all the errors in it and these could be you know typos in the header or the footer or you know incorrect labels or whatsoever all kind of different things so that's a nice thing to prepare for um, to and be aware about but I think the presentation is probably one thing that you can best prepare yeah. Because I think that is where you can also differentiate from lots of the others how well you are presenting. And it will help you anyway in your career to invest a lot of time in your presentation skills. Yeah. So um, if you have opportunities at uh, university already, really um, invest in that. Try it ex you know, and get a lot of feedback on it and so that you're really, really familiar with the topic and absolutely can do that, you know, wake up 2 a.m. in the morning and then you can give your presentation. It needs to be that kind of good because when you're actually there, you will have a lot of stress. And um, if you then have your first couple of sentences in your head and you can directly start with that, that will calm you down a lot mm -hmm. because then you have, you know, the most stress is at the beginning when you give your presentation. And if you then get into the presentation and you get into the flow, you have your confidence and then it runs smoothly. And then you can also confidently pr uh, uh, present. So the most important thing is really this first minute of the presentation. If you can get that really good, awesome. Yeah, I think one piece of advice I'd say as well that we're looking for, sometimes we have very technical interviews, um, you know, we, did, we have asked, it's on a statistical topic, um, but what we're looking for as well is can you communicate it, you know, we necessarily don't even know the topic ourselves, we might not understand it, and so we want to see can you break it down, simple terms, make it easy to follow. Um, sometimes they've been very, very technical, a load of formulas, mm -hmm. 
and not really understood it. Um, so yeah. really think about that piece because when you're in your job role, you're going to need to communicate to non-statisticians um, or, or possibly you know, teach other statisticians, but even then it needs to start off quite simplistic. So mm -hmm. don't get too bogged down into the detail and try and make it complex. Do the opposite. It might be a complex problem, but simplify it. Yeah, and also in terms of the, uh, you usually can choose a topic. Yes. So choose a topic that you're comfortable with. Yeah, don't strength. Yeah, don't mm -hmm. choose one thing that where you think that's a stretch for myself, but I really want to, you know, impress the people. That might easily backfire because uh, you could easily have someone sitting there that is, you know, has 30 years of experience, is really, really good on that topic, and ask you all kind of detailed questions, and then you that can completely backfire. And I've seen that. And so, uh, better you choose something that is maybe not that fancy, mm -hmm. but where you can shine through uh, from a presentation mm -hmm. point of view. Okay, in terms of confidence, I think the, the start of the interview is really, really important. And I can, can tell you a quick story about one of my first interviews that I had, and I was not planning well for how to get to the company. And I arrived there really just on time <laughs> and I was completely stressed out and um, I, I really learned from that. Yeah, plan a lot of buffer into it. If it's a longer drive or something like this, maybe consider to arrive the day before. Yeah. Um, I think that takes so much of the stress out of it. Prepare everything that you know that that all these other things are really kind of okay and come, you know, half an hour, an hour early or something like this. But you can, you can spend maybe in the next, the last hour in the Starbucks next door or something like this. But, but make sure that you're arriving in a relaxed, relaxed fashion. That's one of the key takeaways from my career and my, my experience. But, but Rian, for you, what's this kind of, in terms of going through the interview process, what's what's really important from from you there? Um, I think talking about the confidence is, is a good one. So, especially with graduates, I, I expect they're going to be nervous. Um, it'd be unusual for them not to be. Um, sometimes they're very very confident and. Not, could work against them as well. You don't want someone quite arrogant coming. No, no, surely not arrogant. Yeah, yeah. So don't. I think don't worry about nerves. You know, I've been very, very nervous when I've been in for interviews. Um, but try not to let it get the best of you. In that you're struggling with your answers. You're coming across very, very shy. Your your answers are very short. You're not really elaborating as much as you could. Um, I think trying not to be nervous throughout the whole interview, so what I'd say is, is expect the initial question or two for them to be nervous, but hopefully, you know, that's part of our job as the interviewers, try and relax them. Yeah. Um, I'm not yeah. here to grill you, I, I want <laughs> you to do well. Yeah. Um, I really want the best for them and to give them the best chance, so you know, I think we do try and help them relax mm -hmm. um, into it. So. I think you know if they're nervous throughout the whole entire interview, it can be a little struggle sometimes. Um. So Rachel, what's your experience in terms of the sort of job interviews? I think one of the main things I try and focus on when I'm nervous in a job interview or even in an important meeting with high up management is to remember that they have been in your position before. They've had their first interview as a graduate themselves, they were probably very nervous um, and knowing that they don't want you to fail, they, they're looking for someone that will fit into their company and equally you're there to try and understand whether you're a good fit for them. Um, and or whether they are a good fit for you. Yes. I, yes. Th I think it's kind of, you know, it's you want to sell yourself but the others also want to sell themselves mm -hmm. so it's it really needs to be fitting both sides mm -hmm. and i think if you go into the interview and say well 
I hope this is right for me, but maybe I find out this is not the right place for me. That's also okay. Yeah. So go with that confidence into into the interview. Any any other things, Rachel? I think um, I think we mentioned earlier that obviously there are a lot. There's still a huge need for statisticians in the industry, and remembering that I guess like you just touched on companies are trying to find as many statisticians as they can you know and um, it, it's almost the ball is in your court and that if you you might walk away with more than one offer um, and it's finding the place that's most suitable for you as well um, and remembering that it's it's in, I guess it's an interview for both you and the employer yeah yeah well. Rianne um, I was going to touch on um, the confidence side and, and that it's working both ways, that we we want you to do well. So um, I gave two and two last week um, to graduates. One, I was in the technical, so the stats interview. One, I was in the competency. And, you know, there were times where there was a bit of silence. They were struggling a little bit, um, but we were there to try and guide them and... Um, don't panic. Yeah. yeah. That's what yeah. I if if you can't answer a question off your throne, um, just try as best you can not to panic. Um, and we try as well to ease that situation and you know, like I said, guide or talk through, probe a little further. Um, sometimes it may be they're kind of talking around the topic and mm-hmm. try and try and hit it on. Um, try not to waffle too much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But we find ourselves doing that, you know, I think, okay, I think this person knows the answer, they're not quite hitting it, or saying the exact point I want them, so I'll probe a little bit. Um, but take it as a good thing, don't necessarily take it as a bad thing. Um, it's our way of wanting you to get to the right answer. And yeah, if we yeah. think you can, then we will do that probing. Yeah, and, and if you are kind of stuck for a moment, just, you know, say, um, sorry, I'm just stuck, can I just start again? That's yeah. completely fine. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, don't try to uh, yeah freak out in these kind of situations. The other thing is, if you get really nervous and um, it's a, these days are really long, so so and very often you will have back to back interviews. Sometimes just taking a a break at the restroom is completely fine. Yeah, just for you to. Relax, mm-hmm. get down, think about your strengths, think about your strengths, think about your strengths again, and then what you do again. So, so that's, that's really important. And with that, you know, if one hasn't gone as well as you hope, don't let it affect the next one. Mm-hmm. Um, because, you know, we've had candidates that maybe were slightly weaker in one interview, uh, they were very strong in the second, and we like them, you know. We can forgive some things, so don't rule it out. And yeah, I'm just thinking of one graduate interview I've done. It, it started reasonably well, actually. Really, really liked the person. Um, quite a strong start. Um, but then there was a question that threw them, and you, I could see they just panicked. Their face or their expression, they just weren't expecting the question. They they tried to answer it and waffled a bit and kind of went into a bit of a wrong direction and I was really hoping she'd come back on track um, but unfortunately I think they panicked a bit too much and let it affect the rest of the interview that it kind of went downhill okay. um, yeah. and yeah. I was gutted I was really gutted um, so yeah I would just say if, it, if there's a question or even the whole interview hasn't gone out as well as you wanted to don't let it affect the rest of the interview or the next interview um, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think the other thing is these are always learning experiences and if you can influence it, first interview for those positions that are least interesting for you. Mm. Because mm. then you can use them as, as kind of training for those that you really want to get. Um, so. That's, I think, my thing. It's, it's kind of, there's always learning and experience from it. And there's lots of zeros. There's lots of pharma companies out there. Um, 
this you know constant posting of, of things on social media and on, on the PSI homepage where you can uh, look for new job applications. So don't panic that this is your only only choice. Yeah, and that is a you know you must master this. Of course, do your best, but don't think this is the one and only option. So uh, maybe that also gives you a little bit of a relaxing time. Mm. And not to be disheartened, I guess, if you don't get your first interview. Yeah. Okay. Don't get the With the placements, um, I didn't get the first two, actually, and I was pretty gutted. Um, but, yeah, I did get... I think sometimes things happen for a reason as well. Um, the third one went very well. I think I definitely grew on the first two experience, and I'm I can see where things weren't perfect. <laughs> um, but it's history, and... You know, um, it really doesn't matter now. Um, Rachel, any other topics that you that you want to cover? Um, I guess we um, could go through some do's and don'ts during the interview. So I know there's um, we covered quite a lot of do's previously, um, but I guess um, the don'ts. Yeah. We were talking about being confident earlier, um, but also you want to get the balance of not becoming too familiar, um, as if you're friends with the interviewer. Yeah, be professional. Um, yeah, I think so this be professional, professional is really important. Yeah. So, also kind of appear professional. So, so no flip flops. <laughs> <laughs> we had a, a guy coming with trainers. Um, wow. I, it, it, you know, it wouldn't rule out at all, but it's <laughs> something we all noted and in a debrief someone said, did you notice that person was wearing trainers? Um, it's just something, yeah, yeah. yeah, a distraction that's maybe not needed. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you really come across as professional, even if you kind of are the most relaxed person in the world, that is a professional interview, so appear professional. And yeah. there's loads of tips online about what to wear, yeah. what not to wear, you know, don't wear heavy perfume, don't, you know. You know. Um, one don't I'd say is um, don't try fudging your answers. Um, if you don't know the answer, don't try and make it up and waffle yeah. your way. I would more appreciate just a simple, I haven't covered that yet, I haven't yeah. studied that, I, I don't know. Yeah, that's actually a complete fine answer. I would yeah. rather have someone that says, I, I don't know, than that kind of make something up, completely agree. It's very obvious to us when we <laughs> don't know it. Um, they tend to um, waffle a lot, talk mm -hmm. around the topic. Um, yeah, there are examples when someone has talked at length and I've still not really got the impression they know the answer and they've just sort of wasted 10 minutes of the interview time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> well, 10 done. minutes where you could have told about your strengths. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. that continues throughout your career though, doesn't it? I think, <laughs> I think you soon realise that stats, statisticians, you don't know everything and you can't possibly know everything, so you might have strengths in certain areas, but it's okay, even in a meeting, to say, you know, well, I, don't, I don't know anything about that topic. Of course, and um, there's definitely been interviews that I've been in as a candidate and haven't known the answer. Um, but again, don't get stressed out, just say calmly, I don't know the answer to that question. Yeah. Yeah. I've not covered it. Okay, Rianne, Rachel, that was an awesome discussion about um, the, how to go through this interview process from the CV up to the end of the uh, interview. And um, then, you know, just one thing, you can always follow up with especially the HR person and, you know, uh, send uh, you know some nice email afterwards saying thank you um, that was really nice something like this uh, that is always a kind of good thing um, and feedback yeah if feedback. it's not gone your way um, yeah. ask for feedback yeah yeah so if you get turned down then yeah, always ask for feedback yeah okay thanks so much for any further information of course check out the effective statistician homepage and say so you can find further links and everything else. Thanks so much. Thank you. 
Thanks so much for listening to this episode. So with this episode, we conclude this season of the PSI Calc podcast. And let's see what the future brings. For sure, you will get another episode next Tuesday. So watch out for that. That's another regular episode of the Effective Statistician. So thanks a lot to the Calc teams that um, worked really, really nicely together. Uh, to make this happen and to have these really really nice episodes coming out if you enjoyed all of these episodes or maybe just one or two of them please tell your colleagues about it tell other students about it and please also share it on social media on LinkedIn or whatever where social media you are because this will help others find these uh, podcast episodes and also learn from it and you can of course always find more news on the effective statistician.com slash student and maybe you listen to one of the other regular episodes but that's coming out i'm pretty sure there will be lots of interesting things for new starters there as well so thanks a lot and talk to you soon